Hey, this is Connor. In my last video, you saw a super cavitation experiment I performed in my garage. That was cool, but it was hard to get the machine to spin the probe fast enough, and the video quality was low because the water in the test pool started looking like a washing machine. So I decided I needed more horsepower and a bigger test pool, like Lake Washington here. By the way, this is the probe we'll be using in the next experiment. So here we are in our boat on Lake Washington in January 2013. This time the test probe and camera are attached to a wooden arm suspended off the side of the boat. A note to viewers, there are a number of safety precautions we took that I'm not going to go into in this video. There is definitely potential for injury so please don't try to repeat this experiment. Notice that the probe is spring loaded and I have a ruler taped on the end of the arm. This is used to measure the force on the cavitator before and after supercavitation. Turns out you need to go pretty fast to see the supercavitation effect with a half inch probe. Once we get the boat up to just over 30 miles per hour, we can actually see the supercavitation around the cavitator directly from the boat. You can see it on the video here in a bit. You'll also notice that the probe with the cavitator on the front of it moves forward once supercavitation begins. That's because the supercavitation bubble reduces the force required to push the probe and cavitator through the water. Alright, now watch closely because in a few seconds you'll be able to see the supercavitation bubble form. I've been trying to get clean video of this stuff for a while now, so this was a pretty exciting day. But there's more to come. Next I want to try a much bigger cavitator. To see what happens, you'll have to watch my next video.